Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Government and Legislative Relations Committee for Thursday, April the 8th, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the state superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Present. Ms. Hen. Present. Mr. Mahumsa. Thank you. Ms. Rosenberg, uh, will you please call the names of any staff members uh, participating in today's meeting? Mr. Baysmore. Present. Mr. Clorns. Present. Please call and note the names of all staff members participating in the meeting who have not previously been called. There are none. Thank you, Ms. Rosenberg, and good afternoon, um, Mr. Baysmore, Ms. Hen, Mr. Corns. And I welcome you to uh, what is an auspicious meeting for this particular committee because, of course, we work side by side with the General Assembly and they are in their last week because they close midnight on next Monday. So they are wrapping up their matters. Having said that, I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Baysmore. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, sure, Pastor, to the board board members that are here, um, uh, Vice Chair uh, Julie Hen. I wanted to give a quick update on the blueprint for Maryland's future, known as the Kerwin Bill, and also um, the Companion Bill, uh, Built to Learn Act. Um, as we all know, um, and, and I'm happy to report that the uh, the Kerwin Bill uh, passed passed this session um, through the House. In, in the Senate legislation, it's it's right now in the governor's hands, um, where he could he could sign it into law, he could veto uh, the bill, um, or he could not sign it and let it just go you know go into law uh, after 30 days. So um, the governor um, said publicly that he's not going to sign the bill 
which means that it will go into effect. I, I believe it's 30, 30 days after the after the assembly. Um, uh, sign, you know, after sign and die. Um, so effectively, we know now that the Kerwin bill will pass, uh, which uh, means that the Built to Learn Act, which was coupled with uh, the Kerwin bill, uh, will also um, pass. And that is our capital funding uh, through the Built to Learn um, Act. Uh, that will allow the Stadium Authority, the Maryland Stadium Authority, to um, issue, um, I think it's about $2.2 billion uh, of, of, of uh, revenue bonds uh, to fund our capital projects uh, around the state. And as everyone knows, this has been a priority uh, in Baltimore County to get our uh, school construction and renovation projects and um, uh, back on track. So with this legislation being passed in the infusion money that we get from the state, we can get back on track um, and, you know, building new schools, renovating schools and repairing schools. That's a big deal uh, for Baltimore County. Uh, Baltimore County government um, um, has our share of the funding. County Executive uh, Johnny O, this has been a priority of his. He has uh, uh, maintained the funding from the county in uh, so that as soon as as soon as we get the state funding, we can we can move forward. So that's that's really good news. Um, the Kerwin bill actually is about four billion dollars over 10 years that will that will um, uh, go to a variety of things through school systems all over the state, including Baltimore County uh, teacher pay raises. Um, there's money in the Kerwin for a special education um, 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 CTE programs, um, community based schools. Um, a lot of good uh, initiative that that um, will will come from that over the next 10 years that will help to put the resources uh, behind the work that this school board and others are doing, um, addressing a lot of the uh, issues that are emerging. Um, you know, it, it, for instance, in Baltimore County, we have a growing homeless population, uh, English language learners um, are, are growing and uh, children with um, IEPs and 504s. That's growing. So a lot of these um, um, issues and situations require resources, uh, you know, to address them. So all in all, that's good news. Um, as Ms. Pestuish said, the um, legislature will come to an end um, Monday, um, the 12th at, at, at 12 midnight, unless they extend it for some reason. They, they, they can extend the session, uh, but uh, I don't anticipate that. And so that's uh, that's our two priority bills that we were looking at the last couple of years as Kerwin and Built to Learn. So thank you. Um, Mr. Baysmore, before you um, move on, I know you uh, plan to address it, but just because we're at that spot now, um, talk about the revision. You know, I spent a lot of time with that committee with us putting time frames and et cetera. Um, for how that money was to be laid out. But we know now because of the delay that things have changed. Uh, can you give us an update on some of that? I know people have been asking about that, particularly with Built to Learn as well. Yes, ma'am, um, Madam Chair. Um, and that's House Bill 1372 you're referring to, uh, the Blueprint for Maryland's Future Revisions Bill. And, um, and I would be remiss if I didn't thank Madam Chair uh, for your work. Um, you were appointed by the Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones, to, to, to serve on the uh, funding formula work group for the uh, Kerwin Commission, and which was the group that actually figured out how to fund Kerwin. It was heavy lifting uh, all summer long. Um, you were there very engaged in the conversation in the meetings I was able to attend as well. And uh, so the all important part about funding um, um, I think you, I think the committee that you won did a great job in, in laying out the funding for the next 10 years. When you did that, you had certain timelines at that. At that time, you had timelines. Um, and so what this uh, revision bill is doing, this companion bill is doing that went through the legislature this year was adjusting some of those timelines because obviously COVID, we lost a year. Um, the, the, the bill was vetoed by the governor. And, and then it had to be reintroduced. So that was a year that was lost. So a lot of the timelines 
and certain things that were supposed to fall in place, um, you know, um, were a year behind. So this revision bill is to look, you know, adjusted a lot of those funding formulas to coincide with the new timelines and to make sure that they were accounting for um, um, other things um, like the 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 federal stimulus money that's been coming in. And it's it's a it's a lot of money and it really is going to help a lot of local governments and local school systems. And and, you know, I just you know, really fortunate that we're, we're getting this federal funds. So a lot of those funds can be used for some of the things that the Kerwin uh, had had established that that you guys had established. So which means if we can use federal funds for that, then the money we allocated in the state, they can use for other things. So that's what this. Can I just jump in here there? Thank you, because I mm -hmm. want us to just have that as a note and anyone who might be listening in that what you just said is critical because one of the things that we addressed um, when we were working on the formula and I remember I had to meet with our county um, people, not the school, but the county people and the school people who handled and Miss Han I know will be interested in this piece um, uh, who handle budgets because every LEA had to process how they were going to pay for their portion of it. And at that time, of course, we didn't have a pandemic, so we were not in this, this situation. So we weren't getting stimulus funds. So right. the pandemic has been truly egregious, but if we look for the light in the storm, the light is that we have some some funds coming in now from federal uh, money to offer us that light to be able to do some of the things that we would have to have put off or that made some school systems very anxious in terms of how they would get that money. So thank you for Absolutely. pointing that out. I just and wanted to rub a stamp that. And, and good because that that needed to be highlighted. Um, um, uh, Madam Chair, and, and I tell you the other thing that's good right now, too, is that um, even though the governor is not signing the bill, he's, he's going to let it uh, uh, pass on its own without a signature in his budget, in the governor's budget and his supplemental budget. He put a lot of money in um, for education, which will go directly you know, to a lot of the things in Kerwin and some other things we want to do. And the state legislature, they work, you know, work well with the governor on all this you know, these new funding formulas. So we can be real proud of that. I just wanted to say that it was really good to see the state legislature, the governor, um, um, you know, with their with their um, um, budgets and their supplemental budgets, um, really prioritize education. So this is good, be good for the county executive and the mayors and everyone who, who gets money from the state. We all do um, um, to fund schools. Um, we're in a pretty good place right now. Um, you know, even though we're going through one of the worst times with our ransomware and the COVID for Palmer County, it's been a very difficult year, you know, for the board, as you and Miss N knows, um, just adjusting to all of this. But we, we just feel good about um, this new federal funding that is really um, helping us. Um, and, and, and I just want to highlight one little thing. This stimulus money that's coming down now is more flexible than past stimulus. And that's what's making it so effective because, you know, the governor, the legislature, the county executives and mayors, they can have a little flexibility in using the funds so that they can adjust it to things that are happening, you know, like with tutoring, after school programs, summer programs, you know, you know, addressing the learning loss and all of that. So that's really good, too. That was a little different with this stimulus was that they allow flexibility so that local governments who know best can kind of say, OK, we can use it for different things. Um, so that that's um, one, Thank you know, you. just want to give that kind of kind of that update, which I think is really, really exciting and 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 wasn't a forecast a year or two a year. If you remember a year or two, it was dire when COVID first hit. Everyone was like wondering how we're going to get through this financially. But, you know, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, I took you off your agenda, but I just thought it was important to put it all together. No. Thank no. you, Mr. Baseman. Thank you. OK, do you want to report Mr. Baysmore now on uh, the other bills? We can just sort of while you're on, just have you 
pulled together those things that those local bills or bills that pertain to all local LAAs. Oh. Yes, ma'am. And I didn't pull all of the bills. We had um, an unprecedented amount of bills this, this session, as you know, Madam Chair and, 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 and uh, Vice Chair Julie Hand. It was a because we ended the session early last year, I think what happened was a lot of those bills that didn't go forth last year because the if you remember the legislature had to close early. And um, so a lot of bills that weren't put in last year, they rolled over to this year in addition to all the new bills. So mm -hmm. it was a lot of work um, this session, um, just a lot of work and, and doing it in a whole different atmosphere because everything was virtual. So, so um, I just brought a sampling of bills that I know that we were had talked about previously and just wanted to just run through real quick. And if anybody had any questions or anything, uh, just to let you know that they're, you know, they're either moving or they, 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 they're not moving. Um, and we won't know the final outcome probably until um, the last day of session on a lot of these bills, because until, until they get on that floor and, and it's passed and, and then, and, 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 and signed into law by the governor, you know, it's, it's, you know, we don't want to get, get out ahead of the process. Um, so I'll start off with uh, Senate Bill 150, HB 181. Um, this is um, a Board of Education, actually Board of Education Election of Officers Bill. Um, this bill was introduced last year, but it didn't go anywhere, and they reintroduced it this year. Um, um, Delegate Ebersol on the House side and Senator Sidnor on the Senate side. That actually um, says that when you have the, uh, the annual um, election for the chair and vice chair of the uh, Board of Education, that a majority vote. Um, will 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 we'll carry the day as opposed to the to the threshold of seven that was that was in the past. Um, so that bill uh, is moving forward um, on the House and Senate side. How, however, there was there was an amendment attached to this bill on the Senate side by Senator Sidnor that um, actually asked for a thirteenth member to be added to the school board that would be appointed by the county executive so so that the school board would have an odd number 13 uh, so that when you vote you wouldn't have a, a you know an even vote um, so that amendment um, today was looked at earlier today um, at the hearing on the um, house side and they agreed to the original bill on the election of officers but the house um, did not think I'm um, adding a, a, another board member, a uh, 13th board member um, at this time was something that they wanted to move forward with. So they they stripped that off of the bill, which means now that the bill goes back to the Senate. If the Senate concurs with their stripping the amendment, the, 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 the election of officers bill will stand alone and move forward. But if the Senate does does not agree with that, then they go and go to what we call a conference. The Senate and the House will come together in a conference and try to hammer out the differences. So with that one, I'll say to be continued. We'll continue to watch that bill to see if that amendment um, stands or will not. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that one. Um, also, um, the uh, Senator, I mean, Senator, <laughs> Delegate uh, Kathy Forbes um, had put in a bill for the school nominating uh, commission uh, HB 4468, that essentially uh, when there's a vacancy of one board member, uh, like we had uh, with, with, with um, you know, the unfortunate um, passing of, 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 of Dr. Hayden, we had a vacancy and uh, they had to have like three meetings all over, you know, through every part of the county and go through all of these processes that took months, as we all recall, and um, it added to the time frame. Of, of appointing someone in that position. So what what uh, um, Delegate Forbes is saying is that we can have one meeting, virtual meeting, that everyone can attend from around the county. We could post that that meeting on the website so people can see it. And, and you would effectively probably reach more people, which, which I'm sure it will, uh, because at those meetings that they had when they had them, I went to the one on the west side and it was like two or three people that showed up. And I think she said, at the other meetings that they had around the county, you know, no more than five people had showed up. So with this virtual meeting that she's uh, recommending um, and the streaming that it'll, that it'll stream, they'll reach more people and it'll 
um, truncate the time so that it won't take months to get through that. And because nobody wants to have a, a you know, a, you know, a, a empty seat on the board while you're conducting business for a long period of time. So this is moving forward. I think it's moving forward on both sides. And 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 again, I always say until it's until it's signed, uh, we always have caution. Uh, but we'll keep monitoring that bill, and and that is you know moving 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 forward. Um, Delegate Guyton and Joshua, our student board member Joshua Muhamza, uh, uh, testified on this bill in the state legislature. Um, it's HB 418 that um, it's called Symbols of Hate Policy, where um, Delegate Guyton um, uh, introduced this bill that basically came from constituents and students. Uh, uh, in Hereford that um, were upset about like certain signs like swastika, uh, um, uh, certain, you know, words, um, uh, a noose um, and, and other uh, symbols of, um, um, of, of hate that was being brought to the school, either on people's shirts or on, on trucks or, or certain things. Um, and and uh, so they, they, this bill would 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 ban those symbols of hate um, that people have when they when they bring them to school. Um, this this bill there was a lot of debate about First Amendment rights and everything on this bill. Um, um, that and and but at, at the end I think everybody agreed um, that there are certain symbols that don't belong in the school and uh, not limited to the ones that they they mentioned. Um, um, but any symbol that would cause like a disturbance, people to fight, you know, and, and other things like that, they want to be able to say, no, we're not going to have this in, in, in the school system. And, and, and also being mindful of people's, uh, you know, right to express themselves. So that bill looks like it's moving forward. And as I said, Joshua Muhammad, there were other students that testified from our school system about this. They were very, very powerful and articulate and intelligent, and they were very, very passionate. Um, uh, uh, about this bill. So I'll keep you posted on that one as well. Um, HB 753, which is Delegate Ebersol student discipline policy bill um, that um, is basically uh, as a student organizing. When students organize and want to have peaceful demonstrations, um, this bill is requiring that there's certain um, parameters that are met. Um, that it's just not done, be, you know, because of last year, and there were so many students who wanted to express themselves and in, in, in social justice and protests and things like that, which we all agree, you know, is, 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 is democracy at its best. But he wanted to put some kind of guidelines as to um, uh, these peaceful demonstrations. And so that bill, there was a lot of debate about that too, um, but it's, it's moving forward um, and we'll keep our eye on that. It's just trying to create some standards for all schools that if, if students want to peacefully protest and we support that, um, then there's certain parameters that they have to stay in and and, and to work with the school, uh, but not to prohibit, not to prohibit it, but just have certain guidelines. Um, the other bills I want to talk about is uh, Senate Bill 245, HB 496 and HB 189. And, and I lump these together because these are SRO bills, student resource officer bills. Um, there were about four or five of them this, this session. Um, there's a national debate about, uh, about student resource officers that's going on in this country and how effective they are in schools. There's data that's out that says that when you have SRO uh, police officers in schools that uh, um, minority students um, are arrested you know, two to three times more and have records uh, than 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 the other students that are that are in the school. And that data has driven a whole new conversation about having SROs in school. And so the three bills that I mentioned in, in various forms would have prohibited uh, school resource officers in the schools. Um, they're not moving. They haven't moved. There was a lot of great debate on both sides of of that. Um, um, uh, of those bills, um, but I think ultimately what the local jurisdictions were saying was if you live in a local jurisdiction and, and you don't particularly want to have SROs, give the locals that local jurisdiction the option to do that. But if a school system 
and like in Baltimore County, we have a great relationship with our SROs um, to allow them to keep functioning if that local jurisdiction wants to function. So the outright ban of SROs, those bills didn't move. And the one bill that is moving forward on SROs is, is uh, HB 522. And this bill actually um, is saying that, you know, the schools that want to have SROs, those that choose to, um, that they, that training, you know, the training is there for the SROs, but also training for uh, the administration so that they understand the role of the police officers when they're in the school. So uh, that type of training uh, right now across the country is 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 ramping up, um, and it's 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 good training because it 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 really gets everybody the not just the police officers but the the school teachers and administrators on board with with what's expected of everybody because we want this this the uh, SROs in the schools um but we also want the school to be able to, to discipline and do those other things that really are not in the officer's purview and so with proper training you can get you can get 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 to that and uh so we'll continue to watch HB 522 um it looks like it's moving forward and again it's 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 um really drawing some lines and in, and in, in emphasizing training and giving local jurisdictions the option of whether or not to have um, have SROs. Um, uh, there was a lot of emphasis on mental health services, mental health bills uh, in the um, uh, legislature this year because you know of uh, COVID and learning loss and all the things that children were were dealing with. Um, there was uh, bills about um, early literacy and dyslexia uh, practices, and I know um, Joshua Muhammad was. Um, I, th I think he testified on this one as well, and I know that um, Madam Chair, uh, uh, Ms. Bastour was is, is heavily involved with early literacy and dyslexia and can speak much more eloquently about it than I. Um, but this bill sponsored by Delegate Ebersol um, is, is, is moving forward as well uh, that addresses some of the issues around early literacy and, 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 and dyslexia and how do you address that. And, uh, and Madam Chair can certainly weigh in because she's more involved with that than, than, than I am. But again, I will continue to monitor that. We have a couple of more days and, and uh, I'll be able to report to see if these bills and others, other local bills have, um, you know, have passed or, 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 or not. And lastly, the blueprint for Maryland's future revision bill. I did have that on my list, Madam Chair, but we already covered that, that revision companion bill uh, for the blueprint. So that that um, draws my report to a conclusion. And if there's any questions or comments, hopefully I can answer them. Thank you so thank, much. And thank um, you. Thank you. Mr. Bays more for all of that. Um, I appreciate it. Miss, um, well, first, let me make sure. Mr. Mahomes uh, is still not on. Is that correct? I, no. Okay, yeah, um, Ms. Pan, do you have any questions about any of the bills um, about which Mr. Baysmore spoke? I do not. Thank you, Ms. Pester. All right, thank you, Ms. Han. Um, and I don't either. You you did um, a really fine, comprehensive uh, job. I am pleased to see those that are moving forward, um, moving forward, especially the one with mental ones with mental health and as you noted um, early literacy and just to note that um, our curriculum committee did last month devote the whole session to dyslexia dysgraphia and dyscalculia so and we plan to do more because that's the, the three d's as i call them that they are like the um the hidden um, pieces to the whole reading puzzle. And it's important for more of our parents and students to know about them and to understand them so that we can make sure they get the services that they need. And I just to throw in that they are not to be um, on the surface confused with a learning disability. It is something that needs to be addressed, but you don't necessarily 
have an IEP for it, you would have an IEP attached only if there's something else that's going on. I wanted to throw that out because that's a major misconception. So I thank you very much. Um, Ms. Han, do you have anything that, um, because we're moving right along this afternoon, do you have anything that you want to add that you think um, this committee should address at this time? Not at this time, Ms. Pestier. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank and you, there's um, Mr. Baysmore. No, I was just thank you, Ms. Hen. For oh. the, yes. And there's really no need for me to do um, an update from Mabe because everything Mr. Baysmore just said is exactly what was covered uh, on Monday at our uh, last Mabe session, um, which was just a recounting of these bills. So we are um, pretty much for our work for this um, committee almost at the end. We will meet again on, I think it's May 8th, 6th, is that, is that right? May 6th, thank you. May 6th um, to see just what things uh, happen <coughs> in this these last few days how things ended up to wrap up everything um, but Miss Hen Mr. Baysmore Miss Rosenberg I'm sorry Mr. Mahumza is not here and because we started this year with Miss Rowe I include her I just want to take the time now and not wait until that last me meeting to thank everyone thank you mr corns for your work to make sure that we were able to meet but i want to thank this committee for the fine work that has been done we stayed abreast oh here's mr mahomes oh, i believe just in time um i want to thank all who've been in this particular school year if you will um not just calendar year school year I want to thank you if you've done anything on this committee for the work, starting with our legislative priorities. We have gotten kudos for our priorities and to the current committee. I'm looking forward to us doing it again next year. And anyone who's listening or Mr. Mahomes or Ms. Hen, please let um, our stakeholders know that if uh, via email, if they contact Ms. Um, Gover, they too may have a copy of our priorities and um, that we had for this year. Because even though the session has ended, um, um, even though our session has ended, know that we're still be uh, paying close attention to what's going on in county council. So our priorities uh, circum, not circumvent, our priorities cross the state legislature and the county council. So we'll still be keeping our eyes on them. And I just really want to thank you for the work uh, that you've done. And Mr. Mahomza, I uh, thank you for your note um, and thank you for coming in. I don't know if you heard anything or if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Mr. Baysmore about where certain bills are. Yeah, I was listening through the um, live stream to the public, but. I you have any questions? I don't have, no, no, not right now. Well, oh. I can personally if I do. And I do want to thank you, Mr. Mahumza, for the work that you um, did with um, um, the delegation this year uh, mm -hmm. with hate bill and as well your interest with the uh, bill that will give us a dyslexia handbook. So thank you for the work that you've done. Done. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you for um, uh, supporting me in my endeavors and uh, all the support you've given me um, on my term on the board and uh, on this committee. Same to you, Mr. Bazemore and Ms. Hen and all the staff members here. Well, it has yeah. been our pleasure and Mr. Uh, Willems from Mabe um, was most happy. I received a note. He was most happy to have you on the call. And um, 
we might well be leading the way um, statewide for mm -hmm. um, that kind of invitation, making sure that the students on our boards get an opportunity to, to step out and, and hear from other local education um, areas. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for joining me. Thank you. And I, and I think that is going to be um, the precedent um, that is going to be followed by previous by the, uh, the next uh, student board members. So, um, and I hope they are going to continue their work on this committee too, because um, uh, the, the legislature is just as important as what we're doing on the board. Oh my gosh! Well, if I, we have to go hand in hand, the legislature, the county, and yeah. council, and the board, we must be one. So, thank you. And many of these things, again, Ms. Hen, I know you will be paying attention to um, because as you know, the first couple of things about which Mr. Bays more spoke, they're gonna fall right into our budget committee laps. Yes, they will. So I'm excited about the new timelines. As am I. Thank you for the updates, Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, Ms. Buster. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Um, Madam Chair, may I say, say something as well? Sure, please. Th thank you for the, for the opportunity. And I just want to personally thank all the members that are on this um, um, committee right now. Um, you know, Joshua, Ms. Hen, um, Lily Rowe, um, Makita Scott, all the members, because we've come a long way uh, from when we first started. And I really want to thank this board for all the support that has given this legislative committee. And, 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 and Madam Chair, I just want to thank you publicly um, our legislative priority um, that we sent out, we were, get, you know, we were able to get that together this this year. That was a main priority of yours. I know we still have more work to do, but that was a major milestone for us to come, you know, to get our legislative priorities together and have that uh, sent out, which is our blueprint and kept us moving in the right direction. That that was our, you know, our, our compass, so to speak, in the, in the legislature. And you did a lot of work on that and. And, and Eileen uh, Rosenberg, Ms. Rosenberg. Um, so I, I want to publicly thank you for that. Are you looking That's at a, this applause, Ms. Rosenberg? Come on. I'm, <laughs> even though you can't see Mr. Mahomes and Ms. Han, look, that's for both of them. Woo that's a big deal. Thank you. And I want to thank the our legislators um, who are Baltimore County. We're represented well. And I just want to say this publicly. When you go down to Annapolis, we have some amazing um, legislators and they hold key positions in, in, the, in the state. We're around as a county. And I'll just start with us. Adrian Jones is Baltimore County. That's huge. And she's been um, just a major uh, supporter and, and friend to our school system uh, from capital funding, legislation, a lot of things. And we have others there. Um, Kathy Forbes, Delegate Forbes, have hit the ground running. Um, um, Delegate Ebersol, uh, Delegate Ben Brooks. Um, I, and I shouldn't start naming people. Ebers I mean, because you know how that do when you start naming people. Delegate Pat Young, but all of the delegates and senators, um, Chris, Senator Chris West. Um, there's been so many that have been engaging and helping us uh, move our school system in, 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 in the right direction. And I just want to give them you know a, a public shout out because we can't do the work without them literally and um and also to um um uh, miss hen our vice chair who um there was some major legislation on the, in the council um our adequate facilities bill that the county council was putting for represented the school system on that committee again major legislation and she wasn't just there um, attending, she was a major voice because uh, I, I I went to all the meetings. I don't think I missed any uh, in guiding that task force, the adequate facility task force uh, that was created by the council and David Marks, Councilman Marks. I'm sorry, um, that that is going to directly impact our schools. So I just wanted to give that kind of overview of that that we're not missing much. We don't. We might not get everything right, but in the state legislature and working with the council and even some of our federal. Uh, um, 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 friends, we've been we've come a long way and we're doing a lot of good, 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 good work out there. So I just want to really thank everybody and and give Joshua who's on his way to. Is it Yale or Harvard? I, I forget, but 
I mean, Yale or Harvard, I mean, either way. But Joshua, we're so proud of you and the work and what you represent in your, in your, in your voice of integrity and, and honor and respect and your wisdom as a young man. I, very few young people have seen as much wisdom as you have. So you're, you're, you're truly blessed. Um, don't forget us. <laughs> you always have to come back home, as they say. Um, but we all, and I think I can speak for all of us, you know, we really wish you well, and you've been a great addition to this legislative committee. So so thank you, Madam Chair, for letting me have a personal no, privilege. Thank you. Uh, just thank a you, personal Mr. Moment. Baysmore. And, and I, I, I was remiss um, in just saying that uh, Mr. Mahomes replaced Ms. Um, Scott when she became board chair. Um, and she had been the vice chair. So I, I want to thank her too, because she started the school year out on this committee. And um, so all of those, uh, Ms. Scott, Ms. Rowe, Ms. Hen, Mr. Mahumza, I hope I'm not missing anyone in terms of the members, Mr. Baysmore, uh, Ms. Rosenberg, thank you uh, for a great year and um, or season up to this point, but you know, we still have work to do from this committee and Mr. Corns for making sure yeah. that um, that we are, are televised. So unless anyone else has anything else that they would like to share, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Can I get a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mahumza. Everyone have a wonderful evening. And again, thank you. See you next thank month. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Jim, Julie, thank Joshua. You. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Bye, Aline.